in the previous lesson, we did some round trip questions and you might have noticed that they were pretty easy, right? So in this lesson, things are going to be a little bit more challenging. We're going to have to start using variables. So what I wanted to do first was just to compare. So this type of question is what we're going to do in this lesson. Whereas this type of question was the type of stuff we did in the previous lesson. And okay, so what you're going to notice is that in this one, they make it pretty straightforward. They tell you that Amanda drove to the town hall and back. On the trip there, she drove 80 kilometers. On the trip back, she went 60. See how easy that was. They tell you everything about the trip there and the trip back. Then they also tell you that the trip there took four hours. So it's pretty straightforward. In this lesson, the questions take on a bit of a different path. It says that a container trip, a ship traveled to Madagascar and back. It took seven hours longer. It's not saying it took seven hours. It's saying it took seven hours longer to go there than it did to come back. The rest is pretty easy. The average speed on the trip there was eight. The average speed on the trip back was 22. So the main thing about this lesson is that they're going to start using words like longer or less time or foster. And so they're not going to be exact about the values. They're rather going to say it's longer, it's six hours longer than what the other one was, but they're not even going to tell you what the other one was. We're not going to solve any of these right now, but we will be solving them in the next, I mean, in this lesson. But I just want to show you another one. So it says that Imani drove to the ferry office and back. It took one hour longer to go there than it did to come back. You see how they're starting to add in those types of things? Whereas here they did not say three hours longer or two hours longer. They just gave you the values. So that was the previous lesson and it was a lot easier than the stuff we're going to do now. So let's begin. So here we have the question, a container ship traveled to Madagascar and back. Okay, so let's um, let's say we are going from, I don't know, the harbor or the port, whatever you want to call it, um, where the ship sails from, and it's going all the way to Madagascar, where they made the movie, <laughs> and then it's going to come, uh, obviously it's going to come all the way back. So we can still say, we can still say that the distances the distance there and the distance back, those will always be the same. We know that. That's that's going to be the same. Okay, now it says that it took seven hours longer to go there than it did to come back. But we don't even know how long it took to, came back, to come back. So let's say when it came back, let's call that X. Okay, now think about this carefully. If this one is X, then what would this one be? Now don't say 7X. A lot of, I know a lot of students, they want to say 7x, but let me show you. If this was three hours, then how would you find this one? Well, you would say three plus seven. You wouldn't say three times seven. Okay, you wouldn't say, sorry, three times seven like that. So if this one's x, then this one must just be x plus seven, just like we said, three plus seven. We're not going to say seven times x because that's like saying three times seven, and that's not what we want. Okay, so there we have that. That is the um, that is the time. So the time, and then this is the time for this journey. All right, so let's go get our table. We're still gonna make use of a table, because a table is just brilliant. It really helps us. Okay, we need to redo that. So once again, we can have distance, speed, and time, and then we could say going there, and then coming back home, you can write whatever you want there, as long as you understand. Okay, we don't know the distance. We we do know the speed. They say that the average speed on the trip there was eight kilometers, and on the way back it was 22. Now, the time going there, so we said let x, let x be, um, x is this one, so what is that? That's the time coming back. The time coming back. Okay, time coming back. So that will be x. And then the time going there is then x plus 7. See that? Now we can use our famous distance speed time formulas. And what we could do here is we could work out um, the distance because we know that distance is speed multiplied by time. So we could say that the distance is going to be, now be careful, it's 8 multiplied by x plus 7. So you're going to put that in a bracket, and then you're going to multiply that in. So you're going to say 8x plus 56. So that 8 is going to multiply in. You see how this is a little bit more interesting than the previous questions uh, or the previous lessons. So we're going to say 8x plus 56. 
Now, for this one, you're also going to do that. We're not going to say 8x plus 56 over here. Um, I know the distances are the same, but we'll do that just now. Just trust me, check what I'm going to do. Let's now use these two values to work out the distance for this one. So that would be distance is equal to 22 multiplied by x, which is just going to be 22x. Now, we know that the distance going there and the distance coming back is exactly the same. So we can make these two expressions equal to each other. So we can say 8x plus 56 must be the same as 22x. And now we just have a basic equation where we solve by putting all the variables on the one side and all the numbers on the other side. By now, we are all quite comfortable with that. So I'm going to put this 8x over, so that's going to give me 22x minus 8x equals to 56, and then that's going to give me 14x equals 56, and then x would be equal to, because remember you'd have to divide both sides by 14, and so x would be equal to 4. Now don't stop there, a lot of students, they just stop there, but you maybe haven't answered their question. We actually haven't. Check this out. It says how many hours did the trip there take? So they want this one. But what we've just calculated is x. So we've just calculated x as 4, but this one is x plus 7. So if you take 4 plus 7, your final answer then, 4 plus 7 is 11 hours. Okay, so please promise me that you won't just get your answer and then think, oh, I'm done. Always make sure that you've answered their question. Because remember, they didn't tell us which one is x. You could have said that this one is x, and then you could have said that this one down here would be like x minus 7 or something like that. So you chose x, but that isn't necessarily, that x that you chose isn't necessarily what they are asking for. So you might just have to do one extra step. Okay, let's try some more. Here is our next example. Okay, so I would suggest if you want, you can pause the video and give this one a try for yourself. So Imani drove to the ferry office and back. Okay, so let's say Imani drove from his home. I'm always making these people drive from their home. Um, <laughs> so he drove from his home um, and he drove to the office and then he drove back. Okay, it took one hour longer to go there than it did to come back. So it took one hour longer. So for example, if you say coming back took X hours, then how long did it take to go there? It says that it took one hour longer to go there. So you could say X plus one. If you are a student that prefers to say that this one is X, then this one must be X minus one because this one must be faster. So it must take less time, okay? Doesn't really matter. You will get the same answers at the end, but I'm gonna say, um, this one's x, and then this one's x plus 1. But the other way around is also okay, x and then x minus 1. Because if this is 6 hours, then this must be 7 hours, because it took 1 hour longer to go there than it did to come back. Okay, so that's the setup. The average speed on the trip there was 25 miles per hour, and the average speed on the way back home was 30 miles per hour. How many hours did the trip take? Okay, so once again, table. So we have um, distance, speed, time, um, going there, coming back. Or let's maybe, let's be more sophisticated, Kevin. Let's say home to office, I'm like a caveman, there and back. Okay, so home and office, and then let's go office to home. Okay. Right, let's have a look. So we know that sometimes this is a speed, by the way, so just be careful. They did tell us that this was time, so that's hours, and this is also hours. Okay, so going from home to the office, the time is x plus one, and then going from the office to the home, the time is x. Then the speed going from the home to the office is 25, and then the speed going from the office to the home is 30. Okay, so now what we can go and do is use our fancy formulas, d equals to s times t, Dist speed is equal to distance over time, and then time is equal to um, distance over speed. So what we could go do is calculate the distance for both of these. So for the home to the office, we know that, um, so let's just go home to office, that distance would be equal to the speed uh, multiplied by the time 
which is x plus 1, and so that would be 25x plus 25. So 25x plus 25, so we can put that over here. And then for the office to the home, so office to home, that would be um, distance is equal to speed multiplied by time, and so that would be the speed, which is 30, uh, multiplied by the time, which is x. So that would just be 30x. Okay, and now what do we know? We know that the distance, um, we know that the distance there is the same as the distance back. So let's just say um, distance there is always equal is always equal to the distance. I'm just gonna say dis because I'm cool. The distance coming back. Remember that. So the distance going that way is the same as the distance going that way. So we can make these two expressions equal to each other. So we can go 25x plus 25 and then we make that equal to 30x. Now we just solve for x, so we can take this over to the other side, and so that's gonna be 30x minus 25x, and then on this side we have 25, and so we end up with 5x equals to 25, and so if we solve, x will be equal to five. Now don't stop there, we need to make sure we've answered the question. The question says, how many hours did the trip there take? So that's the home going to the office. So they actually want this one. And what we've just calculated is this one. So if x is 5, then this one will be 5 plus 1, would, which is 6. And so therefore, the final answer would be 6. And I'll be specific. It might be a time, a distance, or a speed. But this one's how many hours? So we will say 6 hours. Here's the next one. A cattle train traveled to Johannesburg and back. The trip there took six hours and the trip back took eight hours. Okay, so that sounds very easy like what we saw in the previous lesson. However, check the next part. It averaged five kilometers per hour faster. So they're not telling us the exact numbers. They're just saying faster or slower on the trip there than on the return trip. Find the, cattle's, the cattle train's average speed. Okay, so here they're not telling here they're giving us the time, but then they're making the speed a little bit weird. Okay, so let's quickly draw this out. So let's say we're going from um, the home again <laughs> and we're going to Johannesburg and then we're going back home. So it says that the trip there took six hours. okay, so that's six hours and the trip back took eight hours. It averaged five kilometers faster on the trip there than on the return trip. Okay, so going there, it was much faster. So let's say that the speed for the trip coming home, which was the slower one, let's say that's x, and then the speed going there would be x plus five. Please don't say five x, because then you're saying five times faster and not five more, okay? So um, this would be the speed, this would be the speed, um, going there, and then this would be the speed coming home. Let's draw our table. So, so this would be distance, speed, and time, and then this would be from home to Johannesburg, and this would be Johannesburg going home. Okay, so the speed going from home to Johannesburg, we said was x plus five. The speed coming home was x. The time going to Johannesburg is six, but the time coming home is eight. So what we can do is we can just use our distance is equal to speed multiplied by time formula, and we could work out both of these. So for home going to Johannesburg, we could say um, that the distance is equal to the speed, x plus five, multiplied by the time, which is six. Now what I like to do is I just like to switch them around because that is allowed. And then what you do is you multiply the six into the bracket, so that's gonna give us six x plus 30. So six x plus 30. Okay, so it's got six x plus 30, like that. All right, then we're gonna do the return trip, which is just to multiply these two. So distance is equal to speed multiplied by time, and that's gonna be x multiplied by eight, which is the same as just eight x. Then once again, we must remember that when you go from home to Johannesburg, or when you come from Johannesburg and you, or if you go from Johannesburg back home, that the distance is the same. 
Like if you drive from your home to your school, when you drive back home, as long as you follow the same roads, it's the same distance, right? So we're gonna make these two things equal to each other. So we're gonna say 6x plus 30 equals to 8x. And now you just move the variables around and solve. So we can take this one over. So that'll become 8x minus 6x. And then this side will be 30. And so here we can have 2x equals to 30. And then we can divide both sides by 2. And we end up with x equals to 15. So that make sure that that's the answer that they want. It says find the cattle train's average speed on the outbound trip. Now that's a bit weird, I don't know why they do that. But outbound is when you're going away from your home. So that's the trip there. Okay, so, so they want this one. So what we've just found is that the trip coming back home was 15. So then if you say 15 plus five, that'll give us 20. And so the speed going on the outbound trip will be 20 uh, kilometers per hour. Here's another one. So it says that a passenger plane flew to Las Vegas and back, okay? So where did they start? Of course they always start at their home. And then they fly to LA, let's just say LA. Um, oh no, that's not the same thing, is it? Um, <laughs> let's go Las Vegas. Okay, let's go to Las Vegas and then we're coming back home. Now the trip there took five hours. Okay, so we know that that took five hours. And then the trip coming take, coming home took four hours. Um, it averaged 64 kilometers per hour faster on the return trip. Okay, so it was faster on the way home. So let's say this one was x, the speed was x, sorry. So let's say speed here is x. And the time is five. Okay, then this one, the time was four. So this one, the speed will be a little bit faster because they said it came faster on the return trip. So you could say x plus 64. Don't say 64x because then you're multiplying them, but you just want to say x plus 64. Okay, now we can go and fill in our table. I hope you guys are starting to get the hang of this now. So we go DST. Um, let's say outbound. Let's be fancy. Outbound and return. So outbound is when you go away and return is when you come back, you return. So we know that the speed for the outbound is x and the speed for the return is x plus 64. We know that the time for the um, outbound is 5 and the time for the return is 4. So now we can just use our distance is equal to speed multiplied by time formulas. So um, distance, so let's do it for the return one first. So that's gonna be four multiplied by x plus 64. And so if you had to work that out, you'd get four x plus, then you'd multiply that, 256. So we can say four x plus 256. Then for this one, we could just say that the distance is equal to um, the speed multiplied by the time, but that's just gonna give us five x. So I'm just gonna put a five x over there. Now, once again, we know that the distance going out is the same as the returning distance. So we can make these two expressions equal to each other. So we can say 5x is equal to 4x plus 256. And now if you had to get x by itself, you can do that by just taking this to the other side. So you end up with 5x minus 4x equals to 256. And so therefore x would be equal to 256. But now make sure you've answered their question. It says find the passenger's plane on the outbound trip. Ah, so that is x. So that means this is our answer. So therefore we can say that the answer, because we must use the correct units, 256 kilometers per hour.